Kelly. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I want to thank you for taking time out of your weekend to sit down with me and have a conversation. Uh, welcome, welcome. Anything for you. Thank you. Thank you. So for folks who are tuning in, uh, Ali is a client and has become a dear friend. You completed the Freedom Class program, my uh, transformational coaching program, what is now over a year ago, hard to believe. Time flies really, really fast. And this is actually the first time I've had the opportunity to do this sort of video interview with a client who finished the program quite some time ago. Usually we do a video interview when we do them. It's sort of, you know, right, shortly after. Um, so this was a really uh, nice opportunity that you extended to me to have this conversation with you. And I think it's gonna be really interesting to see how you feel about everything and the whole process and the whole journey all this time later. So um, with all of that said, would you like to just maybe introduce yourself a little bit and tell folks uh, a little bit about who you are and where you were when we first met and you put your hand up to be, uh, you know, to get on the road and travel with me through the Freedom Class pro uh, process. Yes, I will. Um, so my name is Ali Zek and I am uh, someone that I basically am an advocate for people that have been inside of the mental health system. Um, I was inside of the conventional mental health system for over two decades and uh, was basically misdiagnosed and really abused by uh, psychiatry and a lot of different mental health practitioners. Um, all of them telling me for uh, you know, over two decades, 25 years, that I was mentally ill um, and would need to be on psychiatric medications for the rest of my life. And that ended up not being true. And I um, am over four and a half years off of any medications at all, um, any type of medications. And have come to understand that it, it, I was really abused by that. So that is the, the kind of advocacy work I do, um, working with individuals on an individual basis that are wanting to come off of psychiatric medications. Um, and then also I blog about it as well. Um, when I met you, Tammy, I was um, really in, in a middle road of recovery. I had met my holistic psychiatrist, Kelly Brogan, I think two years earlier. And she was the one that told me I wasn't mentally ill and that I didn't need to be on the drugs that I was on. And so she helped me. I'd already gotten off the drugs when I met her, but she was the one that helped me through kind of the withdrawal process because withdrawing from them is not as simple as just stopping taking them. It's a very long process of um, re, re, um, kind of re-regulating your nervous system in your body. Um, and, and when I had been working with her for a few years, I um, had completely radically changed my diet, my lifestyle, but I still was not seeing a ton of improvement. I definitely was uh, not suicidal anymore, but still in so much pain. And I, I worked with a counselor that really identified to me that I had um, been in a very abusive relationship um, with a whole family system, um, not just one person, but a, an entire family of very deep generational abuse. Um, and he let me know that I had been abused. And, and that was a really new concept to me because I did not have the awareness from my own childhood of what abuse really was. And so I was on like a narcissistic, I think, abuse um, Facebook group. And this was all a very new, like a, a really kind of drinking through a fire hose um, of information coming into me, understanding that this was possibly something I had gone through and not really understanding what it was. And Tammy and I connected there, we connected there. And I, I have to say that I credit um, you for saving my life uh, because the, the abuse was so covert and, and so unconscious, meaning it had passed down in my own family too, but in the family system that I married into, it was such a deep level of, of covert, um, really narcissistic type unconscious abuse that um, I really would have, if, if it weren't the psychiatric drugs that were going to kill me, it would have been that abuse um, and the gaslighting and all the different things that, that came along with it. So I credit you um, with you know, being one of, of two or three people that literally saved my life because you helped me, um, brought me into this awareness of um, kind of plucked me out actually the system and helped me to start identifying 
that I had been abused, what the abuse looked like, how it maybe originated, how I was playing a part in the abuse, and then how to get myself out of it uh, and how to heal. Um, and all that same time, you were also working with my kids um, and, you, and you did the same for them, which was, I mean, you basically not only saved my life, but you saved the entire trajectory of my children and my family, my legacy. So a lot of stuff there. That's a lot of stuff. Yeah. Wow. And, you know, we were just talking about this before we hit record, you and I, and as I said to you before, I'll say it again, that is certainly without question, the most profound compliment I can receive um, as a life coach specializing in these issues. But the truth is you did the work. Mm -hmm. The truth is you put your hand up and said yes and made a decision to invest your time, energy, resources, etc. And you showed up week in and week out and you were absolutely coachable and you were willing to stand still and feel all of the feelings and you worked like a warrior on yourself as did your children, right? Um, I had the great honor and privilege to work with your kids as well, as you mentioned. And the entire family, I believe, must be here on some powerful mission to have lived what you have lived and to be walking the journey that each of you are walking. And three of you are uh, pretty vocal on the interwebs with your own messaging, touching the hearts and lives and souls of people day in and day out with your truth message. Um, and, uh, and it's a beautiful thing to, to have had any sort, to have played any sort of part in that is, is really um, my honor and my privilege. But uh, again, you're, you're the people who showed up and did the work, right? So, so the kudos really go to you. Um, okay, so looking back, going through the process with me, because like I said, the, the unique thing about this inter interview is some time has lapsed. And I think that's a really good thing because like, where are we at now? Right? Like we can, we yeah. can look at, I read through your testimonial that you wrote over a year ago when you finished the program and it's, it, you know, it's beautiful, but it's like, oh, you know, like I've had the opportunity to have this front row seat to watch you progress more and more over all of this time. Right? So from the perspective of where you are now, looking back over your shoulder, how would you say the freedom class helped you what specifically would you say you got out of walking that uh traveling that path that journey with me well i think the first thing that i got was you um you know just just the insight that you bring um whether it was in a group session or an individual session it was uh, very very powerful because there's something when you've gone through this type of abuse to have someone else that has been through something similar, validating and kind of mirroring that back to you. Um, I can't describe how powerful that is. Um, it's like having your arm cut off and you're talking to people that have both arms and then you see another person with that same arm cut off and there's just such a resonance um, that you have. There's an unspoken you know, kind of language that you have with that person because a lot of this is extremely nuanced um, and very, very deep. It's really hard to put into context sometimes. Um, and so, you know, having you was the first thing I'd say more than anything, because I had, I had worked with therapists for two decades um, and no one had ever really seen me or seen exactly what, you know, I've come to find out was going on. It was very much blaming me, blaming my reactions, um, you know, saying things were my fault. And then it became the drugs, you know, were a catalyst to a lot more psychosis for me. So it, it was just kind of a, a snowball effect. Uh, but then the class itself was um, particularly um, deep. I mean, it was very, very in depth. And, and, and I think like halfway through, I think my kids were maybe a little bit farther behind in the group than I was. But at some point I started coming into my awareness that what it was really doing was causing or catalyzing a spiritual awakening for me. Um, and that can mean a lot of things, but to me, it is achieving a level of self-awareness um, in the world around you uh, and how you participate in it in such a deep and empowering level that really nothing can affect you like it has before. Um, you're able to really, you know, I love the catchphrase, you're able to observe things but not absorb them anymore. You're not caught in this whirlpool this tornado like everyone else around you may be and like you used to be 
you're able to really set back and it's just a very, it's a, it's, it's a really high level of peace um, that you can achieve when you work through a class like that and with someone like you, uh, I'm not going to say that it's easy because it's not, um, but it, is it, is it worth it? Yes. Was it gratifying? Yes. I mean, it was, you know, probably the, the most, um, gratifying thing I've ever done in my life. It, it is kind of cool. I'd love to see what I wrote a year ago because the progression has never backslid. It's always gotten better. I mean, it's like every day, you know, it's another level of awareness. It's another level of something else like, you know, shaving off that I can process and that I can, I call it kind of develop, take that pain, alchemize it and create another rung on a ladder, you know, for me to climb up. Um, into, you know, higher level of evolution, basically. Yeah. Wow. What a beautiful answer. And, and actually that, that is what you wrote. Um, what is it? Okay. So at least I'm in consistent. the original testimonial, you, um, you said that I had significantly, I'm, I'm paraphrasing here, but I had significant, significantly contributed to your personal spiritual awakening. And I remember crying when I read that the first time. And Very true. Yeah. Because that's, you know, and, and again, you know, I mean, I'm just the guide, right? I'm, I, I walk you through the process of the program that I created, but you're the one who has to show up and do the work. And, you know, it really is between you and you and you and the God of your understanding, your higher power. And the more you surrender to the process, you know, I, I've said it before, I'll say it again, recovery from anything is about two things it's about growing up and it's about waking up right and when you play full out the way you and your family did that's what happens it doesn't mean that life suddenly becomes perfect and we aren't still challenged and problems don't still occur and we don't you know we were talking about it before you know the triggers and the navigating this never-ending journey this lifelong journey that is the process of recovery right but now we're doing it with eyes wide open and with some tools and with some boundaries and with some healing. So we're not carrying all these subconscious magnets, just calling more and more of the same, you know, feeling victimized. But, you know, there's a difference between going through life as a perpetual victim and acknowledging that, yes, I've been victimized, but I can take radical responsibility for my experience right. and my healing and my recovery and my conscious awareness and my growth and my spiritual connection and operate from that place. It's very different from, oh, what was me? I'm a perpetual, perpetual victim, right? Like the difference between that and the warrior that, that you are. So, um, so that's a beautiful thing to, to be able to participate in that with you. But again, you did the work, right? Um, what would you say it was like working with me specifically? Because you and I had uh, yeah, a fair bit of one-on-one -on -one time as well. So how was that experience for you? Uh, so the way I explain that process of, you know, working with you or the spiritual awakening part is that someone like me, um, you know, being as codependent and as abused and unconscious of it all as I was, I was basically, I call it unconsciously unconscious. Like I didn't even know that I didn't know. And, and so what you helped me understand, you really did take my hand and, and I'm kind of visualizing this now and kind of walked me on this path into like a consciously unconscious state where it was like, Oh crap, I'm aware that I, you know, don't know a lot. And I'm, I'm aware that this actually was what I thought my reality was, was actually not that stuff. That's not what it was. Um, and all of these things that I had blamed for myself for, that's not necessarily true. Um, and all of these people or these behaviors that I thought I was causing were really on them. And I was taking them so personally. And, and the one thing I will say about you is, again, I had worked with a lot of therapists over the years. A lot of them, you know, I was mentally ill, bipolar, borderline, um, uh, you know, OCD, GAD, all of these different things. I had multiple suicide attempts. I had been to the depths of the amount of shame that the mental health system can, can put onto someone's back. So you were one of the very first people that did not shame me. Um, and that's a really key point, I think, in recovering from that type of abuse um, is because we have placed so much shame and then that type of abuse 
puts that type of shame on you. So I was really um, also very gun shy um, to even do any more work, but I knew that I needed to at a deep level and you felt very, very safe to me. So it was um, a blessing to be able to work with you because you know I may have shown up a few minutes late, whereas before a therapist would have scolded me, shamed me, you know, told me that I needed to get my craft together. You were always just so like, you're fine. You know, let's move into the work. Um, and, and so it was just amazing. You gave me like a really soft place to land that nobody else that I'd worked with professionally besides, you know, Kelly Brogan um, and people like that had ever given me before. It was always, you know, you're not enough. This is your fault. Shaming me, making me feel less than um, constantly taking my inventory instead of teaching me and giving me the skills so that I could take my own inventory, if that makes sense. Um, and so, I mean, it's, there's so much that you did for me. Um, but what it was like working with you, another point I'd like to point out is that it was um, very interesting because I had never worked with a female with boundaries before um, that, you know, on, a, on an individual level like that. And, and part of my family of origin history is that there are no boundaries. It was very enmeshed. And that's the type of family that I married into, too. So working with someone with boundaries was a new concept to me. Um, and again, it was a little bit intimidating because I had never I had no concept of boundaries. And you came across as extremely kind. So it gave me this kind of role model of someone that's got some grit, you know, mess with me and you'll let, I'll let you know. But also someone that's extremely kind and open and receptive you know, to people, but has a sense of boundaries. And you really kind of taught me that, that nuance that boundaries have. They need to be firm. They need to be defined. You can kind of make them, um, you know, they can move around a little bit for certain things. But there's always this, the work of self that helps you to define your boundaries. And that's what you, you know, really helped me do on a huge level. I'd never, I'd never been around them before in my life. And women in my past that had had them, my family and the family I'm married into, saw them as very rude or arrogant or bitchy. And so again, I had to kind of revisit that and completely remodel that, you know, concept for myself because that is not what I was raised with. And I had to kind of, you know, reformulate that in my brain. And I used you as my, you know, as my role model of how a, a beautiful, successful, empowering person can show up with empathy and compassion, but also have boundaries that keep her, you know, intact. Mm hmm. Beautiful. Um, it's funny because I, I listen to you um, describe that experience as that like sort of new waking up to this like new way of being in the world. And it takes me back to my early recovery journey where, you know, someone taught me, you know, similarly. Right. And it, a number of people obviously contribute to our journey. But um, it's amazing when we grow up, which so many of us have in a family of origin where no one ha ever had any boundaries with us. They don't have boundaries with each other. They don't have boundaries with us emotionally, psychologically, spiritually, physically, what have you. Um, it's, a, it's, it's like speaking Chinese. It's a whole new language. Yep. And it's, you mean, you mean I can say no, and that doesn't make me bad or wrong. Right. Um, and once we start to, you know, take ownership of that, that, that personal power and exercising self care in that regard, everything begins to shift, right? Mm -hmm. Including how people react to us. Now, the truth is, I, you know, will probably always by some people be considered a bitch, arrogant, controlling, rude. There are always going to be humans who are, you know, if you want to know what you're dealing with, set a boundary. Yes. You know, if you want to find out, you know, where someone's at, say no to them right? And you'll find out very quickly, right? So that will always be part of the journey. But <clears throat> whether or not we are affected by that is also part of the boundary experience. When I have healthy boundaries and a healthy sense of self, other people can, you know, see me any way they choose. And that just doesn't even land, right? It doesn't right. Have, to have an effect where without boundaries, it can take us out. Absolutely. So there's a big difference in the quality of our life when we learn to exercise, help, you know, self-care and healthy boundaries. Everything changes. Would you not agree? 
Oh, and that we deserve them. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a right that we're born with. Mm -hmm. um, absolutely. To have a defined space of who we are so that we can develop, you know, ourselves. And then we can learn to become not so dependent on people, but interdependent. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you're in your bubble. I am in my bubble. And we exchange, mm -hmm. you know, beliefs, ideas, values. We have, you know, collaboration, but there's not this just, you know, weird <laughs> enmeshment where everything's all tangled up there's not an entanglement mm -hmm. um and it really allows my relationships now that i have to be to develop out of consciousness you know i'm not choosing relationships out of wounds now i'm choosing them because i really identify or i align with that person on a very deep level their energy feels really good to me um, it's safe energy. It's mm -hmm. not what feels familiar anymore because that's one thing that I did learn from you too is that we are attracted to what's not what's safe, but what's familiar. So familiar to me from my childhood was very chaotic, very incongruent, um, very passive aggressive. You never knew where you stood. And so I chose relationships in my adulthood, in my young adulthood, just like that. Mm -hmm. And so now it was again, kind of re having to reformulate in my brain what does a healthy relationship look like? What do I really want? And I don't have to have it. I don't need it like I used to. I choose it because I want it. And there's a really big difference between needing something and wanting it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, when we walk out into the world hungry, <clears throat> we're more vulnerable, right? Yeah. When we walk out into the world filled from the inside out, able to meet our own needs and filled with a healthy sense of self-love and self-esteem, we are not suffering from what Ross Rosenberg would say is right. love deficit disorder, right? So yeah. um, it changes everything. And you know what a lot of people don't understand, I know you do now, but what a lot of people don't understand is your outside is a reflection of your inside. Completely. So if you're the person who, you know, no matter what, when you walk into a room, if there's one alcoholic in the room, that's the person you're gonna be attracted to. And that pattern is repeating throughout your adult life or any pattern similar to that, that's not their fault. There's something going on inside of you that's calling that to you, right? Yeah. So, you know, the more we clean up, we were talking about this before as well, are, you know, taking our own inventory, right? Doesn't mean that I don't discern that a thing is a thing, but I'm conscious enough to spend more time cleaning up my side of the street, managing my energy, working on my internal reality, healing my stuff, which the vast majority of us have that work to do to some degree or not and as a result the inside shifts and then what is being reflected back to us what we are calling into our lives in every area of our lives begins yeah. to shift up level and improve right totally. absolutely if you were to nail down the specific results um, on a day-to-day -day basis that you know came as a result of going through the freedom class program what would you say they are you know, the one, the one word that I always use, Tammy, when I'm talking about my evolution and, you know, my spiritual awakening is just awareness. I think that just really is, for me at least, it was, like I said earlier, it was shaving off these levels of, you know, unconsciousness, you know, below the veil, behind the veil, whatever you want to call it, um, and being able to, to shave off layers and create more awareness. Whereas before I was being run by my subconscious, um, and by my patterns and my, you know, conditioning that I had received from my parents and they received from their parents. And we could go back, you know, 10, 20 generations. Um, I, I feel like I am the first one and certainly my kids are in my family lineage that um, is breaking those patterns. Uh, and I'm doing it consciously now instead of just, you know, ramming myself into a wall every day. It's, um, you know, having triggers come in, like you, you have said, you're not gonna not, I'm not gonna not have triggers but it's 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 actually increased the time i think victor frankl says between stimulus and response there's a space there and that's what it's done where i was so you would have such knee-jerk reactions to everything my response time when i take in information even if it's a trigger um, i'm able to sit with it you know much longer now and use discernment on is this my stuff is there is this their stuff do I need a boundary here? What's going on? Is this something that you know is coming up that I need to look at? Um, or does this person just not safe? So it's really kind of increased that, that response time. And, and instead of being a reaction, 
you know, out of wounding again, it's really just had given me the power to choose, become aware, um, watch it, observe it, and then choose how I want to respond to, you know, people. It's changed my life. I mean, there's that, that is the, the reason I think that we're here on this earth is to learn and engage in relationships and expand our consciousness. And that's what you and your class did for me. There's just no question. Beautiful. Beautiful. You know, as untreated codependents, as untreated adult children of family dysfunction, alcoholism, abuse, mm -hmm. you know, whatever flavor of, you know, human unconsciousness we happen to, you know, have to endure growing up, um, we learn to be very reactive. It's a survival strategy, right? And we're living out of those reactions, right? And that, that space that you just described is the difference between healthy and unhealthy you know unconscious patterning and programming playing out on autopilot and stepping into my personal power and becoming the conscious co-creator of my reality one moment one feeling one step one choice one experience one trigger at a time again it's not that we you know we suddenly stop being triggered although we do i, I think you'd agree are, you know, once you've gone through a serious recovery journey, you get to a place where you're not triggered, like, you know, compared to when you first came into the program, right? Like there's right. a big difference, but all these years later, I still get triggered sometimes. I mean, I'm a human being, right? That's, that's the, you know, the reality of life here on, on this planet, especially at this time where so much is rising to the surface for us to look at, right? It, it can be very triggering, but the ability to, breathe stand still feel it look at it discern tell ourselves the truth as yeah. i say all the time right and then make a conscious decision from that place and we're not always going to get that right but the more we can practice you know develop that muscle and practice the better our life becomes our life experience becomes right um so well what i totally agree and one thing that i also learned is before all of this i had triggers i was like my life was a, a minefield i mean you know, i mean there were triggers everywhere i couldn't even do anything tammy without being triggered and now it's giving me the awareness um and and i've done so much work that now i, I really do am able to see a trigger as a growth opportunity and and there's something there that you know is maybe a box I haven't opened yet. Um, it's something that is you know subconsciously maybe still running me. I have some tentacles of attachments that I'm unaware of, and so instead of just running, I, I kind of felt like I was spival, um, the little mouse in American Tail, running around just you know avoiding all of these just people, places, things, triggers because I was just terrified of so much because I had been through so much. Mm -hmm. But now it's more like okay, you know, I can walk up to the bar and you know order a drink, you know. Um, you know, speaking theoretically and say, yeah. you know, hey, what is it you're here to show me? You know, what is it you want to see from that I need to see from this trigger um, instead of being so terrified of it? Shining the light of our conscious awareness on what is being reflected back to us and taking the time to go inside and again, take our own inventory, do our own work so that we can you know, does this serve yeah. me? Does this serve anybody? Or is this a lie? Is this old wounding? Is this something that needs to be healed? Another layer, another level, you know, the peeling of the onion, right? Layer after layer. Um, sorry, that's my, my dog coming into the room there. I don't know if you heard him, but um, yeah. So it's, you know, this sort of never ending journey, but it, we get to a place where it becomes fascinating work and not you know such an excruciatingly painful process once we we get through that you know initial big layer of stuff and we you know learn that the tools are actually very workable and yeah. can be a lot of fun if we're willing to just you know pick them up do the work and play with them right so, totally yeah absolutely yeah. So what would you say to someone who is contemplating the possibility of signing up for the Freedom Class program? You know, it would um, really depend on, okay, so I'll be very blunt about it. Um, it would depend on if you want to live, uh, you know, if you have a pattern in your family, 
I always meet with my clients and I'm like, tell me, you know, who in your family has anybody in your family lineage, have they had addictions, mental illness diagnoses? Because what I'm looking for is this pattern of typically generational trauma um, that's being passed around. And, and really, people like you are the ones that are very aware that we do have some trauma informed you know, things on the, you know, that, that are coming in, like Gabriel Mate, um, Bessel van der Kolk, you know, these people are aware that trauma affects us on a deep level. But, but clinicians and therapists, to a big degree, are still very ignorant of that. Um, and so I would say, you know, if you have a family history or, or you're in pain, life is not meant to be painful. It's really, really not. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm a prime example. I think I have five suicide attempts, you know, maybe eight psych hospital stays, you know, over two decades of being polydrugged on psychiatric medications, being told I was mentally ill, um, I was, I couldn't be in more pain and still be alive. You know, it was impossible. I mean, I was as dead as you can get and walking around. And, and so now, as you can see, I mean, I'm proving, um, you know, I'm like, like I said, I'm over four and a half years off of all medications. Um, I have a business that I run. I have clients that I work with. You know, my kids and I have a, enjoy a very, you know, rich, deep relationship, which we never had before. Um, so I am living proof that your life can transform if you do the work. And the point is, is that you have to have someone very um, knowledgeable, like you are, Tammy, on how this all works, on how, you know, generational abuse works. Um, on how narcissistically abusive systems of unconscious people, how that works, uh, on how, you know, my, what my role, what, what our role is that in the family system, how do we grow up, what did it look like? You have to have someone that's very aware because I'm also, I'm proof that you can heal from it, but I'm also proof that if you go the conventional route and go with therapists and people that, have, you know, my therapist had a PhD um, and she almost killed me by her advice. Um, you know, that, that we have to have people that are knowledgeable about this type of abuse that can help walk us through it. And like I said at the beginning, there's nothing more powerful than someone that's actually done the work themselves. So I write a lot about your therapist can only help you as much as they've evolved themselves. And many of my therapists, I know for a fact, are taking psychiatric drugs um, you know, one's married to an addict. So how was she supposed to help me when I was married to someone with an addictive personality, you mm -hmm. know, when she can't even get herself out of the, the muck? So that's where I would say is you can live a life of mediocrity or pain, um, continue on status quo, living like you're living. And if it works for you, keep doing it. But if I would say most people watching this, something's not working in your life. You know, something clearly wasn't working in my life or you and I wouldn't have met, or it wouldn't have been a match. Um, there would have been you know, nothing for us to you know, talk about. So you and I, I mean, I was you like, to you like a moth to a flame. I mean, I was like, I'm ready to do this work. And so that's what I would say, people, is you, know, you can continue on doing what you're doing if it's working for you, but, but there is a different way. And, and maybe your parents didn't model for you. you know, maybe you know, no answer uncles, grandparents, nobody in your family has ever modeled this for you, but that doesn't mean that it's not possible. And you quite possibly are the chink in that armor that you know, needs to step up and do the work, but you need someone very experienced to help you do that work. Mm. Great answer. There's a lot there. <clears throat> and I'm actually going to take the time to touch on a couple of things with you because, um, you know, you have a, a good amount of experience under your belt as well, right? And in some areas that I don't, you know, um, although uh, there was a near miss with psychotropic medication in my 20s where, you know, what I really needed was recovery and what I got yeah. instead was a bottle of Valium, right? Yeah. And, and at the time I was drinking alcoholically and, you know, white knuckling off of a drug addiction all by myself, not knowing what I didn't know. And that was my doctor's solution, right? So, you know, it's a really tricky subject. I'm fortunate that that was my near miss and that I didn't have, you know, um, you know, we all have our journey and pain is pain is pain, but, you know, and I believe there's purpose in all of it, you know, in particular for someone like yourself, who is where you are today, speaking such a powerful message to people who really need to hear it today more than ever. So it's this, this fine line between, you know, obviously doctors have a place and we need them. Obviously therapists have a place and play a role, right? But it's recognizing that um, there are limitations with certain systems. 
unfortunately. You know, if I'm eating garbage every day and going to my doctor for help without, you know, I can, I can reverse a lot of problems by learning how to take care of myself nutritionally, dense nutrition can solve a lot of problems, right? But, you know, and it's funny because Alec and I on, on the podcast the other night for The Way Forward, we're talking about, you know, isn't it interesting when we're looking at the grander scheme of things here on planet Earth, which is all rising to the surface of the conscious awareness of the collective slowly but surely as we speak, but isn't it interesting that doctors learn nothing? They have like virtu virtually no training about nutrition or holistic healing right. methods, right? And a parallel to that is I've had 20 plus year, a number of them, not just one, but a number of 20 plus year veteran family psychotherapists come to me to go through my program to help them heal and recover from codependency and narcissistic abuse. And each one of them have reported to me that whether it was their marriage, their family of origin, they were fully equipped, never mind helping their clients with this stuff, to help themselves because it was not part of their training. Yeah. And I personally don't think that's an accident. I personally think that, and, that, and this is where, you know, we won't go down the rabbit hole of the grand, you know, that big conversation, but I think it's worth touching on because, you know, it's, I have clients who work with me who are on antidepressants. I have clients who work with me and work with a therapist simultaneously. I have clients who work with me and work with a therapist and a sponsor simultaneously. I personally have worked with a number of therapists, a number of life coaches, a number of sponsors, right? Like I, you know, it's, it's, it's really about wherever you are. Yeah. You have to take radical responsibility for your life and your and your well-being. This is why recovery is about growing up and waking up. Radical responsibility. So it's not a doctor or a therapist or, you know, one individual necessarily that's going to be the be all end all answer. Like you, you know, you gave me the greatest compliment ever, but you also said I was one of three. Like it yeah. takes a village. It takes a team. It certainly did in my case. It wasn't one person who was yes. the and when it comes to you know the the shortcomings of the helping community that's not all therapists there are amazing ross rosenberg is a prime example there are amazing therapists out there who have made it their business to specialize mm -hmm. in these issues and that's the difference maker when i'm interviewing someone to see whether or not we're a good fit a good match to work together the one thing I impress upon them is whether it's me or someone else, whoever you choose to work with, if codependency and narcissistic abuse is an issue in your life, mm -hmm. from your family of origin, your current marriage, you're dealing with it in your working environment, whatever it is, whoever you seek help and support from cannot be a generalist. They mm -hmm. actually have to specialize in these issues. Because this is a big problem. I speak to people day in and day out. You know, they're going, they're, they're going to marriage counseling with, and, and I think you can, you know, probably speak to this yourself, marriage counseling with their high spectrum, highly manipulative, overt or covert, destructive narcissist partner. And the partner is manipulating the therapist and the therapist is falling for it. And the poor individual is sitting there being further gaslit further manipulated, further harmed, further scapegoated in the situation and further traumatized. They're moving backwards rather than forwards, right? So no matter who we choose to work with, when it comes to these issues, make it someone who actually has a proven track record and background of expertise, whether that's a therapist, a life coach, you're, you know, going to a specific 12 step program that's appropriate for you. Someone who actually has a track record yeah. and knows what the hell they're talking about. Otherwise in this area, I think as much, if not more than any other, the risk of further damage is really high. You know, when I think of some of the therapists that I sat down with over the years who, you know, did not know how to help me. Yeah. Did not know how to help me. And it's because their training did not, you know, Gabby Bernstein speaks to it. You know, there she was at the time, still in her drug addiction, 90 pounds, soaking wet, nose bleeding, all of it. And her very well educated family yeah. therapist could not see her addiction. Could not see yeah. her addiction, right? So it's, it's you know, really... It, it can be tricky 
Um, I'm a firm believer that if we are open to a higher power of our own understanding and we are earnestly seeking solutions, asking for guidance, asking for help, when I put my hand up for help, I get it. Yeah. It shows up, right? But we have to ask. We have to ask. So I believe that's a piece of it. And then just being certain to, you know, seek out people who specialize in whatever it is that you need. Because, you know, the reality is there are, there are folks who do need to be medicated, mm-hmm. you know, as a bridge to get them to. And without that medication, without that doctor supervision, without that, that specialized support, they wouldn't be alive, right? So, so there, there are times when that's necessary and appropriate, right? So I, I just want to make that clear that this is certainly not about bashing, you know, that, that oh, yeah. community, but just because of the experience that we have under our belts, we know that, you know, it's not because someone has a degree on their wall that they're necessarily going to be able to help you in this area. So, um, it's, uh, it's interesting. It's, it's really, you know, um, it's, it's a sad reality on our planet, but I think it's beginning to change. I think it's a conversation that has become more and more mainstream, more and more out there and more and more people speaking really loudly to not just the experience, but more importantly, the solutions tell sure. ourselves about the experience but focus on the solutions and in focusing on the solutions that's what expands that's what grows that's what comes you know into our life and from that place we're able to make real progress that actually lasts right that actually lasts it's not about band-aid it's not about you know putting a band-aid on something it's about like let's get real lasting change here we can step into our sovereign power and live as the divine humans that you know we came to this planet to live right like Mm -hmm. We did not come here to suffer. We did not come here to be abused. We did not come here to be someone's target, right? right? So, you know, that really is the bottom line of it all. Totally. Yeah. Anything else you wanted to add to the conversation? No, I mean, it was just, it was just such a pleasure. I mean, it was very, very difficult work. It was, but um, you were just such a, a guidepost for me. Um, and I, I owe you just, you know, so much. So forever grateful to you for everything you did. Uh, for me and my family, it's, it's complete. Like I said earlier, it's changed our entire lives. And, and therefore I know on a deep level, um, it has changed the entire future of, you know, any generation that comes behind me, um, will be different. And you played a huge role in that. Well, Allie, my, my friend and my soul sister who I love so much, it was my absolute honor and privilege. It really was, you know, you were a joy to work with and a joy to you know as to have as a friend that i hold close in my heart so thank you so much for carving out time out of your busy weekend for me to have this conversation i hope you're to the right people before we wrap up i know that folks are going to listen to this and fall in love with you and your message and there's folks out there who have who need the experience that you have the path that you've walked so how would people find you if they wanted to connect with you or tune into your message how would they do that? So right now, the best place to find me is on Facebook or on Instagram, just Allie.Zek. And then I am going to be coming out with a couple of different podcasts in the next couple of months too. Um, one talking about mental health and, and, and you know, different ways um, people have experienced treatments for it. Um, and then another one is just going to be talking about you know, the process of spiritual awakening, kind of coming out of the rabbit hole. Um, and I'm just looking for a place for people to share their experiences, kind of like you and I did today. I definitely want to have you on. Um, but those, those, that's the best way to find me. I'm, I'm here as a, really as a signal. Um, I, I like to be considered a signal to someone, kind of that, like you were for me, like a, a lighthouse. Um, if someone is just, you know, in, in tumultuous waters and in a lot of pain and chaos, can look at someone like me. Um, and know what I went through, what my experience was, and as bad as it was, see me today, um, and know that it's really possible to heal uh, and, and, you know, get through all of this. And not only get through it, but, I mean, really live on a very deep, enjoyable, peaceful, and profound level. 
Mm -hmm. So that's the best place you can find me though, those places. Okay, awesome. So I will be posting this not just on my website, but also on my YouTube channel, Tammy M. Joyce. So if someone's watching this elsewhere, just know that once your podcasts are released, let's, I'm going to put it on my, my to-do list. Um, let's make a mental note to put the links to those two podcasts you just mentioned when they've launched. We'll put them in the description below the video. So for anyone who's watching this, uh, once those are released, from YouTube, you'll find those links in the description below the video. Perfect. All right. Thanks again, Allie. Love you so much. I love you, Tammy. Thank you very much.